So welcome to another war game review from theplayersape.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look, once again, at Here I Stand. And this is the 500th anniversary edition from GMT Games. Yeah. Um, the, I think the 500th anniversary edition, it just put some stuff into the game that had been errata counters before. I think so, and, yeah. And they revised the rules and tidied everything up. Yeah. And kind of put it on a on a deluxe mounted map board. Yep. Um, well, and and the the two player variant that we had played two oh, years ago. That's new for this too. It was uh, added into this mm. game, whereas before I think it was a C three I magazine. Oh, was it? I, 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 somebody's going to say, "What are you talking no, no, about?" It might not be, but, that's, but I think it was. Generally, that's what the anniversary edition offers. Yeah, it offers you that mounted map board, and it's Which is so a conglomeration awesome. of all of the Arata modules and, and inserts and, yeah. and, and everything put into it yeah and it's very 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 nice so yeah I, I i'm gonna say it now because i this is one of the best games i've ever played in my entire life yeah i mean there's a reason it's been around for yeah. as long as it has it's considered a classic yes and i can 100 percent understand why as you play it it is so cool to see what is going on and happening and what you're trying to do and it's just so enthralling. It really is. Plus, it's a it's a very interesting part of history. Yes, and fantastic. And I'll be honest. At least from the religious standpoint, this is one of my favorite time periods. Mm. I lived in Germany <clears throat> for a couple of years yeah. in East Germany, um, not not far away from uh, Erfurt, and it just you know seeing the history in real life, yeah. and so <clears throat> reading about that. Playing it, it's just oh, it's so. It just amazing. comes out of the I game. Love it. Yeah, it's it's a perfect game for me. Yeah, it has, you know, it has conflict, but it's got real life negotiation in it. Yeah, which I'm like, that's a ten out of ten for me in a game. Yeah, if, if well, I can get a play to do something. And I the negotiation is very interesting <laughs> because I, I'll be honest, there were times I'm like, why in the world would I help Mike? Or why would I help Nate, who was, he was France? France, yeah. France was my mortal enemy. I'm, I'm, I'm the English, right? I, there's no way I'd be treating with those guys. But there came times where it made sense because it set me up for things I wanted to do. Well, you know, there's times where it's like the enemy of my enemy is my friend, yeah. and they're like, Ugh. And, and and I remember late in the game we started going after the Habsburgs, right? Yep. We, because they had started to get to the point where it was, it was starting to be a snowball. And I remember thinking, man, if I don't do something aggressive, it's over. And France and I got together. We truced it up. We kind of negotiated and said, I'm going to attack here. I'm going to attack here. And if I win, I'm going here. And it all worked out very well. And ironically, I negotiated really giving up something I wanted and and he got beat a little bit, and then it put me in the position where I was like, I just take it anyway. Ooh, I can I can take <laughs> Paris, and it, it was just so fascinating to see that all come to fruition. Yes, in this cool card driven game construct that is there for us, and yes. I I really had a good time. Twelve to thirteen hours went so quickly. It was an it was. A I cool. know. I was almost annoyed because I'm like. I know. Mm. I need more yeah. time. Like it's snug. It, like the time just flies. Well, and I remember because they came in on a Friday. I think we should have set up and played Friday night, seven yeah. or eight hours. And oh man, then we would have finished it. But we we had good time. We played yeah. Cthulhu Wars. We played uh, Tank, Tank, Tank Duel. Duel. We had a good time. So, but man, here I stand. It's just I, I don't even know how to say it, but I love this game. No, yeah, it, it, it is a big game. It is a long game. Yeah. Oh, but. The other surprising part is, especially when you play it with, you know, four, five, mm -hmm. six players, you know, if you've got one faction, you've got one. I control two. I know. English and the Protestants. And, and, and it was a lot. That's the thing. Well, like, it was a lot. If you can play it six players, do it. If you can get six friends together that are going to play this and take it seriously, absolutely do it. Because then you've got just you to worry about. That's all you The negotiation on. is the best it's ever going to yep. be because there's people there and... It's not that complex rules wise. Uh, it's it's nope. just you're right. You well, and 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 the game really is very. I think it's fairly simple. It's I say that there's a lot of complexity to some of the machinations, but it it's not overly daunting. I feel like it's pretty clear. What it you might do. be daunting for the person that's got to teach five other new people because you got to learn six factions, right? That would wear me out. Yeah. 
but that's why it was nice playing with people who each had a rule book. And each well, and, and we all came game. having, you know, I read over the Protestants and the English, and I kind of knew, I knew generally what I wanted to do. I just didn't necessarily always know how to yeah. do it. Mike was the same. Nate was the same. I think you were the same. Yep, you were the some Ottomans. strategy guides, and you're like, okay, this yeah. is what I should do. At least give you a guide to that very first game of like, oh, if I do this. Move in this direction, like, okay. yeah. But th the idea of the game is <clears throat> take keys. Those little square yeah, spaces. The, the That's keys. It. If you get the keys, you'll win the game. Well, you get more cards. You get victory points from that. It, it, it opens up a lot of other abilities. The, the other thing I love about this game is it is not just a war game. No. It looks at the political, the religious, the trade, uh, with the with the conquest and the colonization over yes. in the New World, and it's like you've got to be involved in all that stuff. And looking back on it, there were a couple things I would have done with, with the English a little differently to get a head start on the conquest and the trade, but it was so fascinating to see all those elements play together to set me up to do certain things or gain victory points, and I, I just think it's awesome. I think that that construct that, that Ed Beach created with all those different elements, and it's asymmetrical. Yeah, very. Nobody has the same victory conditions. Nobody. Well, everyone's yes. So everyone well, you're has trying the to same get the same victory conditions, right? But your method of getting victory points score those is points different. It's so different. That's cool. Yeah, like the French are trying to like build all chateaus. these chateaus and you know, which is so it was stuff. so goofy. I hate. It. I wanted to go in and burn those. He's like, oh, we care but, about fine art and all this stuff. And the Ottoman were trying to do piracy. Yeah, and I don't care about the new world. I'm going to pirate the old world. And you know, the Habsburgs were trying just to. No, they're trying to do all that conquests out in yeah, South America. Yeah, explore South America. English was trying to marry off Henry VIII and get get an heir, which never happened for me. <sighs> Got close, <laughs> yeah. but and then I had to do some of the trade and I had to conquer Scotland, and it was just man, it was just cool. Yes, there, there's a. It can <clears throat> seem like there was a lot going on. But if you've got a six-player game, you don't yeah. have a lot to worry about. No. It's just you. You're focused on you. So, And that's a real credit to the design. Yeah. If I'm the Ottomans, i got this military campaign to run. I want to do maybe some diplomacy where I can get it. And then I'm doing piracy in the Mediterranean. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> if you're the English, you couldn't give a rant about the, the piracy, frankly. Well, there's and there's really nothing the English can do. No. You can loan a ship or two, but... You, you, you got to understand that ship's going to be dead. But like, you know, you don't worry about that because you have to worry about the new world yeah. and getting Henry a good wife and a good head. Yep. It's a totally and, different And set keeping of the French and the Habsburgs at arm's length with, really, my generals were terrible. Yeah. Uh, the English generals are not good. Um, but but I, they're, they're serviceable. Yes. But it's about playing the right moves at the right time, pressing your advantage. I really liked the battle mechanic, too. I thought it was very cool. Yes. It, and, and again, not complex. No. It's my stack of guys. There's steps to it, but it's not <clears throat> complex. Yeah. It, typically, you're laying sieges to places. Yeah. So you just got to make sure you got good numbers. Yeah. Then you got some numbers. Chuck some dice. See what happens. Yeah. And the cards are very well done. You, you know, some of the cards are like one-time effects. Some are... Uh, like abilities that you can use even later in the round. You play it and then you can, for instance, I'm trying to think of one that I used as a Protestants where I built the printing press. And every time I did uh, a thesis or a, I can't remember what the word was, but I would get bonuses for that. And and everybody had cards like that. Yeah. So it's a matter of making sure you get those cards and you can't get cards. I mean, it's it's random. <laughs> yes. Um, the Schmacaldic League, I, I ended up getting, even though I didn't want it, but I was well, Protestant, and so you he, got it on the turn it was going to happen yeah, it was just, anyway. It was weird. It was the worst time yeah. for you to have had it in your yeah. hand. But the cards are well done. I think it integrates very well into the play and drives that play. Yeah. And you discard, you know, you discard the cards for the points, and you might build a a boat, you might build a unit, and then hire a mercenary, or you may send a thing over to the New World. And so it has that element. Then it has the events. It's a very, it's a classic game. Loved it. Yes. It, it, it sticks around for a good reason. Yeah. Most people don't play it that often. Nope. But it's a game that if I had the opportunity, I'd play it every time, I think. Well, and, and we were talking... How many opportunities you can get? Different stories. Yeah. We were talking, though, like at WBC. And, I mean, we're going to try to get... I'm going to try to get a six-player game. Yes. 
Now we got to understand it's probably going to be a day and a half. But I, <laughs> well, I someone know. can teach me how to play. Isn't like that the WWE. oddest thing that it's a game? It's a game that's going to take eighteen to twenty hours to play, and we're like dying to play it again. I know. Isn't that insane? It, it, that is so like Euro players, and we're Euro players too. We play some of those games. They're like, oh, two it's hours. an hour. It's an hour. That game was an hour. It's too long. Are you kidding me? This thing is like twenty hours. Well, it, it's. It, Are we nuts? N- uh, Are yes, we nuts? A little bit. Okay. Well. Because. My wife thinks I'm nuts. How many other games mm-hmm. would I play that were this long? That after that well, much time, I would still be enjoying it. And even Twilight Imperium, we played that for like seven hours. and That was about six hours. Yeah. And after about six hours, I got throttled in that game. Right, right. I was still having a good time, but I was kind of ready for it to be done. But it wasn't this long. No. Not as long as this. this. Twice as what long. other games have we played that are potentially this long? Oh, God. I mean, so we've played a lot of games that can be this long. Mm-hmm. Things like Imperium Romanum. I mean, you can play that. Yeah, game but we played smaller scenarios. Unconditional that were four Surrender. Or five hours. That could That's be 20 one hours. I would play the whole thing. I mean, that thing. Yeah. Like and we need to try to get a game. <clears throat> I played that solo, and I probably played about. Yeah. Probably 25 hours worth. But, you know, sitting down in one or two sessions to play that, probably not realistic. Because no. it's a very big game if you no. play the whole thing. But this, I'm like, so I, I'd do it right now. I it's would. It's very good. And that's and that's what All I... All right, let's do it. I don't want to do a two-player. I want to do a six-player. But that's the feedback that I've heard from it, right? Yeah. People are like, I will drop everything and play this right now. Which is awesome. Like, they're like, it's the best day you'll ever spend. Yeah. And, and I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. This game is that good. For me, it's perfect. It's got simple but really enjoyable combat. It's got diplomacy. It's got economy. It's got your own little asymmetrical victory yeah. stuff. And and, it, and it's a really, really good theme for me that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Every aspect of it. There's not a faction that I wouldn't be interested in playing. Yeah, the Protestants are hard, dude. They're hard, but that's they're really cool. the most interesting man, to me. Hard. Because <clears throat> I live there, so and hard. it's just fascinating. Yeah. I love playing the Protestants, but man, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And that's, that, that's what... I, I think this is a very rewarding game. Yeah. I, I just enjoyed it, and it shoots... Way yeah. up to the top of all time games list for me. It's just I, so fun. I would like to play this at WBC maybe this year. Although we're only going to be there like three days. At three some convention days. this year, we will find we will, a big we will, game yeah. and play it definitely at some point. But I, yeah, great job. The production value on this one is awesome because yes. it's a 500 deluxified edition. Yes. Mounted map uh, counters are gorgeous. They're amazing. Yeah, if you're going to get it, get this edition. <clears throat> yeah, it's. Well worth it. It may be out of print now, but so and the, so that came out what two years ago? Yeah, twenty set October of twenty seventeen. This is the game that will be back in print at some point. Yeah, yeah. it's there's no way they won't. Yeah. The the other thing, so you know, we only played it four player, but that was to me so much better than. Oh my gosh! Well, right. I don't know that I would ever play two player again. We're gonna find four other. The people. two player is yeah. a little tutorial, right? It's fun, but it, it's it's yeah. okay. But all that did was like, here is a tiny drop. It whetted your what appetite. This game. Yeah. It's like, here's how the mechanics work. Yeah. This is, you know. Here's before. how the mechanics work. Go out, find four <laughs> nut jobs. <laughs> now go get some friends. Find four nut jobs and put them at a table and play this all day. But yeah, get maxing out the players on this, yeah. blocking out the time, worth every penny as far as I'm concerned. Agreed. Now, you'll notice I don't have it set up. I'm not going to show you all that because. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a, too much. It's way too there's much. too much. You can go and watch the battle report to kind of see the yeah. board, uh, but there's also there's already some really good tutorials out there on yeah. YouTube. It's a big part of that. If you want to see the mechanics and learn them, there's a video series. Oh, I even wrote down who it was by, but I forget. There is there's a really good just look for here <clears> I stand. <throat> yeah. Uh, tutorial. There's a guy that walks through. I think it's the full first turn, full impulses, and it that teaches you almost every single mechanic in the game, and it's a really clear series. So I, I go and watch that if you want to see the game being played. Yeah. Um, but just you'll have to trust me that it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this game is that good. It has this reputation it, because is there yeah it is there it. anything you didn't like about it? Um, the only thing I didn't <clears throat> like. Is that the um, the days only have twenty four hours in them, so there's not enough time to play it in one day? <laughs> yeah. Like if yeah. we could somehow distort time to fit this in, it's very long. That's yeah. the only. That's the only. Thing. Yeah. It's the only knock on it. 
I, I don't consider it that much of a knock, only because I still enjoyed the heck out of it. But mm-hmm. it's it's yeah, it, you know, you got to make sure you got enough time, and 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 we didn't have enough time when we played and, it. And making that kind of a commitment, it, it's yeah. that can be hard to find people to we, do that. We literally played about half the game in twelve hours, maybe a little more than half. Yes, but I I don't know. That's 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 a lot of commitment. That's it though. Yeah. The, the, everything in game I really really yep. liked. I love the and, way it plays. And the negotiations real, and it can get pretty heated. Yeah, but the other thing about the negotiation though is I, I've always and not that Mike and Nate weren't <coughs> this way, but negotiation tends to boil down to you've got to give something to get something. Yes. And my experience with a lot of players is if they really don't get exactly what they wanted, it's like, nope, I'm done. Because I struggled with that a little bit with Mike. I, I, I told Mike, hey, I, I need this. And he was just like, oh, I, I can't give that up. And I'm like, well, then why would I? Yeah, people try to strung arm each other. And yeah. Like, so then I felt like I had to say, oh, okay, you can just either have this or the deal was over. Yeah, do a little bit of give and take. What, that's what I feel like everybody, when you go into this kind of game, understand you're not going to get everything you want. Negotiation is not about getting everything that it's you want. It's about some compromise. It's about compromise to move something forward. And I think that's what I would like to see people go into these types of games. Be more willing to be negotiable. Be willing to give something. Because I gave a lot. I remember giving boats and I was like, I really need those boats. Because I'm getting ready to invade France. But I gave them. And then I just bought another one because I had enough points. But... And then the only other thing I don't like sometimes from time to time with these card games is you need a card and you just can't draw it. Yeah. And, you know, or you're waiting for even a three or a four, uh, you know, op point card. And I, ne- I remember two or three rounds in a row I didn't get them. And it was like, oh. The, the, that's, that's a fair point. If Because the game is long. Yeah. And if you, you know, you get a hand of four cards early on. And if you've only got ones and twos, that can be fairly It can really devastate you. Yep. But as opposed to someone else who's got, you know, yeah. twos and threes, yeah. they can do a lot more. Um, so, but that's a card-driven game, right? You have to deal with what you've got. Sometimes what you get is fairly meager. Yeah. But a game like Labyrinth, you know, Labyrinth's a game that we love. Yes. L- Labyrinth, we uh, don't they have like the reserves? Isn't it called reserves? Yes. yes. So, so you have a one. You're like, I can't do anything with that. You put it down, and you get a reserve point. Yeah. I felt like maybe that was something... I was trying to think of a way to... I, I rot it after my second play. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but that was something I had a trouble, a little bit of trouble with. That long of a game, over two or three rounds, if yeah. you're getting twos and ones, man, it could just be devastating. Well, and that, it, it, and that goes into your leader card. Your leader. Some leaders can save one card over to the next yep. round. And I don't think my leader allowed that. I think, yeah, I think you're Henry VIII. I don't remember. I don't remember but. He, he had, yeah. And, and that's just it. Each of the different factions are different. Yep. Some yep. of them get an extra card. Some of them can hold an extra card. Yeah. All this cool stuff. There's so much to explore in the game. Oh, yeah. And for me, again, it's so well worth it. Yep. There's so much good stuff. So, so the only other comment I would make about this is when we played this again... I started looking for Virgin Queen. <laughs> yes, you know because yes. it's it's the it's the sequel to this, right? It is, yes. So I was like, oh, I really want to try that one. And man, you, you can't. It's out print. It's out print. Yeah. Every one that's on eBay is like three hundred dollars. Uh, it's on P five hundred on the GMT website right now. So if everyone could put go your and name. sign up for it for my sake, please do. Yeah, because I would be love great. to have Virgin Queen. Oh again. my gosh! But anyway, that's the only other. Great experience, great game, very well done, loved it. I had a great time. Appreciate you guys tuning in. So this is our review of Here I Stand, 500th Anniversary Edition from GMT. The only edition to have, by the way. It's a classic. It deserves to be called a classic. We're just finding the next opportunity to play this again. It's that good. The next 20-hour block of time in our life. Appreciate you guys tuning Mm -hmm. in. I've been Alexander from ThePlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.